So it's about 180 degrees with a thousand percent humidity today. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the perfect situation. We got a primary clog, so the secondary is leaning, leaking, and this water feels fantastic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's sanitary. Definitely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this will be the last time you ever see me because I'll get sick from this. You get the ro you're gonna get the Rona. <laughs> yeah, you get the Rona. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Okay, so Josh and I are on this uh, 19 something, it's old. 1910. 1910? 1910. Oh, geez. Okay, yeah, it's pretty old. So we got a, a over a hundred year old home that we're inspecting today. And uh, uh, it has been renovated nicely, but you are going. Did you drop the towel? You dropped the towel. No, I got it. My hands are all slippery. I had to wash them Yeah, so uh, we're going to go through and uh, try to find absolutely everything we can. Of course, we're going to find problems because it's an older home. And um, let's go check it out. What do we got? That water going straight into a wall. There's some debris in it. Find something there. Oh, yeah. No flashing? No flashing. Uh oh. Debris. Yeah, it's probably rolling up underneath the the wall. There's a lot a lot of angles on this one. Oh wait. A yeah. It's got a flat roof over here or you have a uh, standing water in this location. Easy area to find a, a roof leak. And then we have uh, debris in the valley over here. So these are easy areas for water to gain access. We have a siding to roof contact over here, and uh, um, <laughs> this is funny. The water bottles clog in the uh, the gutter in this location, and what we got an end cap missing. Yeah, so a lot of water will fall off the gutter and wear out the roof in this area. Just uh, getting closer, we spotted some hail damage on the lower roof over here. Uh, it's not significant. If you notice. Some small dinks here, real small, so not significant hail damage, but enough to, to let them know. Wrong type of flashing bonnet vent here. It should be straight up. It's an easy area for water to get in with wind-driven rains. Hey, uh, Josh, can you uh, walk down there real quick for me? Just I'll slide right off then. Yeah. There's a little slide right down. <laughs> and we got a chimney. They they removed, they disabled this chimney, but they put a block on top of it. And you can see right on the top there, there's a crack right there. And then, yeah, and it's not sealed at all. And we actually have evidence of water in the fireplace. There's efflorescence on the, in the firebox. So we'd write up that too as well. You'd want to cap that off with mortar or concrete or something. So if you wonder how we walk on roofs, like this, we like to stick to valleys. You get more traction right here and you just take your time, slow and easy. Discoloration or anything, uh, don't walk on it, but this one's pretty new roof. And then they have a window permanently open and the weather stripping's damaged. We do find a lot of these wooden windows on these older homes uh, damaged pretty often, but you wanna make sure you document all the locations for the windows. All right, so over here behind the garage, we got termite heaven. We have some wood to ground contact. Uh, this AC primary drain is leaking, so we got moisture and we got wood to ground. So let's close in and find these buggers. Push support post gone. Uh, I just saw something. They're in there. This wood is really soft. Oh, there we go. Termites. All right, coming into the uh, attic space here. Uh, the first thing I notice is it, it's pretty cold. And if you can see right underneath the plimum box, there's a uh, there's an actual hole and you can see the air uh, blowing that dust and material around. So it's actually really cold, cool up here. It actually feels better up here than it does inside the room. Uh, the ducts need to be sprayed a little bit better. And uh, uh, we got the heater here, which we will run. We're not gonna be able to open this one up because of lack of access. Can barely get in here. As you can see, the uh, this is me just kind of poking through uh, the, the hatches crushed. And then we have a P-trap missing on the primary drain line. So we need to fill that up. 
and I, I can't really see around the corner but it, the secondary doesn't look like it's in place either so we'll we'll write that up too as well okay so I'm about to go in this crawl space right here and just kind of a quick tip for you guys that are about to get into doing crawl spaces or you do crawl spaces make sure uh, you empty all your pockets and uh, you, want, you don't really want to take this stuff in there because you're going to end up leaving your car keys somewhere underneath the crawl space because they fall out of your pocket. So make sure that you empty your pockets uh, before you go in. Okay, uh, next tip is whenever you're in the crawl space, uh, try to have someone running water in a few of the bathrooms, particularly a tub so they can leave and go do other things. Uh, but yeah, you want water running through the, the drain lines because it's easier to spot a leak or damage plumbing so you can hear the water running through the pipes right now next thing too you want to try to stay away from spiders there's always spiders in the crawl space easy to crawl through these webs so kind of watch where you're walking and then uh, uh, don't go through any wet spots you get into wet spots electrical wiring can touch the, the ground and it can carry a current so if you ever see any low-hanging wires or uh, wet or, you know wet or damp areas don't crawl through that and just pretty much in the the crawl space right there because it's not worth your safety you're in this for the long haul you know if they get mad about that they don't understand the dangers you can really lose your life down here so you want to be careful first spot on the crawl space easy spot you can see where this uh, pier has leaned out of place and it's no longer touching the beam so you want to write this up and you already have foundation need to be further evaluated don't end the inspection right here uh, because you're like oh I called out a foundation person really try to find the most amount of damage you can for them so they understand how significant this is uh, next right up we, we see this all the time but you definitely want to write this up this is an easy spot where termites can come in and they love these piles oh and look right there there's a uh, a an evidence of an old uh, termite colony so I'll get closer so you can see it so you can see that line right there um, that is the evidence of an old shelter tube so we're gonna write up previous evidence of termites so whenever you get closer to these piles you always want to pick up a few of these pieces of wood here and turn them over this wood's pretty fresh but you still want to turn turn over this stuff because uh, it's easy to find termites in these areas so uh, you want to focus on this uh, and I definitely recommend to remove it so uh, next thing here we do have evidence of termites too old termites but this is a shelter tube I did my best to get the lighting in place but you can break it apart and you can see the damaged wood line here so we do have evidence of prior termite damage in the joists and in the uh, the beams here so you got damage here uh, yeah you hear the wood creaking it's still pretty solid but well I don't know you have about 10% of the wood loss in this area they're allowed up to 30 next area uh, they have added CSST underneath the home here uh, CSST is a cor corrugated stainless steel tubing it transports gas and uh, it is required to be bonded so I have not located a bond yet in this area so uh, this is something that we'll report on too as well in the gas section of the report all right so next area this is where we saw damaged floors on the flooring and now we're seeing more significant termite damage across this beam uh, and you can see right here knock down some of the tubes uh, they do seem a little f old uh, but we're gonna definitely write this up maybe they have evidence of prior treatments or the action plans they've taken on this beam uh, it seems pretty solid uh, it doesn't seem to be rotted through or anything but something that we're gonna definitely note for the buyer all right so we have another floor joist you can see it's been eaten away you have pieces of the floor joist falling down and we have more termite damage so they have had a pretty significant uh, termite infestation at one time so uh, we're going to see so you got another tube over here too as well 
So this is something that we're going to definitely note and see what actions they've taken in the past to take care of uh, these, these items here. So we noticed that the ground's a little damp in this area. I won't be crawling over there, uh, but one thing you want to be aware of is we wrote up poor drainage on this side of the property and then we also have water sitting in this area. So these can cause these piers to move. So we're going to recommend to fix the drainage. Next thing is, is we have copper tied into galvanized over here and you can see that you have the corrosion happening and copper this is for a gas line so copper connections are not recommended anymore in our area so we're going to recommend to uh, replace this copper line so it doesn't transport gas so the uh, next area is you know this pier isn't in contact with the beam anymore the shims are loose so definitely a, a fix that needs to be taken care of. So you can see why we recommend to uh, go in the crawl space last. Always recommend to go in the crawl space last because you get pretty dirty, hot, sweaty, and then you clean up and then you go inside and you write your report in this nice AC building if the AC works that day. <laughs> so a recap on what I found in there, you know, you have pretty significant termite damage throughout their structure. So we're going to recommend them to contact how they treated those and how long ago, because some of those tubes looked a little fresher. So if it was fairly recent, that's good. Uh, but with that one beam that runs across the living room, that termite damage looked pretty significant. So we're going to actually recommend to further evaluate that beam. And of course the piers that are that are loose and falling out of place. Those need to be. Uh, let's walk around the exterior and show you some of the things we found on the exterior. Nice little easy call out here. Let me pull out my laser pointer, but you can see right here, uh, missing kick out flashing water. And then you have poor clearance of the hardy plank from the roof. You need two inches of clearance. Uh, so water can easily make it behind here and damage the siding. So recommend for improvements there. Our uh, main service entrance wires are going to recommend to trim the trees away from them because uh, they can easily get damaged uh, with, with high winds. So actually right here you can see in the water heater closet as you come up and look we have some microbial growth and a water stain. So make sure whenever you're looking in closet areas, you always look up because it's something you can easily miss. You do have a sub panel find, but they had um, these really long non blunt tip screws. And you can see down here at the base that nicked that neutral wire at one time. So we actually are not going to put this back on uh, because it's, it's not safe. And we'll document this in the report and we call the agents too to let them know we left a panel open because it has the wrong screws so it's really dangerous you want to really make sure where these screws are going because you can easily puncture like right here you can easily puncture a wire if you drove that really long screw in there so in the same area where we had that termite damage in the crawl space we also have termite damage on the floors here and then it's actually more significant over here you can see the termite damage in the in the floor here uh, here it's been taken care of it looks like or stained or something so you want to keep an eye out on the floors whenever you're looking at properties all right so in the inside you want to make sure you take a look at these fireplaces you can see that they remove the gas starter bar and you can see the efflorescence of how water has been making it in like I showed you from the attic but you also want to look up you can see they block this off with like mortar and stone and whatnot so you want to make sure that you always look up in these fireplaces because you don't want to, your client to light a fire and smoke out the whole house over here we had a, a leaky balcony door and you can see uh, the the um, the baseboard here swollen so you can see that they've had water penetration in the past so you definitely want to write uh, stuff up like that it's actually on both sides you can see it's swollen over here too as well that's an easy spot for a home inspector. I'll say one of our final finds was actually right here underneath this window. That was that window that was stuck open and we had questionable flashing. And if you can shine the flashlight right, you can see water lines underneath the window. I can see it in person. It might not show up very well in the window. So they have water damage running down the edge of the window. Let me hit it with my laser pointer for you. So we have water damage all through here 
right here and then along the edge right here. So I uh, documented that too as well. And you can kind of see it on the beam right there too as well. So window leaking and flashing leaking on the roof section and windows. So in conclusion, I always get the question asked, would you buy this home? Well, uh, considering this is a $1.2 million home, I'm gonna go with, I can't afford it. <laughs> but the biggest thing is, is really it, to each their own. You know, each client has their own tolerances of acceptable or not. So you let them, you assess the damage that you found and let them come up with the opinion. And most inspectors are gonna answer this question the same way. So make sure if you answer, they ask that question, don't get mad at your inspector because we see a lot of homes. Like this morning home, house was a complete wreck. This home is medium, I guess, but it's 1910. It's gonna have 110 years worth of problems in it so we're going to find stuff so let the client make that decision and then the next thing is is for the person that keeps getting on to me in the comment section about me calling out termites as a home inspector i am a certified applicator i own a termite company i can inspect for termites so that is a whole separate report in my reporting system i'm allowed to inspect for termites all right so that's chris with the action if you like these types of videos hit that like and subscribe button and Catch us on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.